Um, that was very touching. It was uh, not anticipated, uh, but I'm very humbled and grateful um, to have served not only you, but this region and an amazing group of talented TriMet people. Um, you know, I, we've all come from different places. I come, I'm a very much from a working class background. I'm very proud of that. Um, and we all use our different experiences in life. And what brought me to this region was a strong foundation of a great system. Um, sometimes you have to go be from away to actually see what's actually here. And the base is so good. Um, but the yeah. work, as you've already outlined, is so far from done. And I really believe the angels are aligned to the service we provide to this region. To, to, uh, there's a strong tailwind, I think, I believe, ahead for TriMet. Uh, because this AMC is not only just about transport, transit, it's about mobility and improving livability as well. Um, and we can learn from other places in the world. But the base is so strong here on so many fronts, whether it be the pursuit, the needed pursuit of further equity, the um, reimagining safety security, transit-oriented development, the, the whole going green part of the world, which is so long overdue, and we're in a race for our, our own livability. Um, uh, but I can, I can honestly say, having worked in other places in the world, um, not just Vancouver, BC, the taxpayer should know what great employees that work in this agency. They really should. Um, and uh, there is an amazing amount of talent here. There's so much work to do, but that's why we all come to work every day. And that's why this board does such great work that it does. So I, I really believe that the tailwinds are strong. There's going to be a large federal infrastructure program, but we need to take advantage of the calm. Yeah, Biden's going to give you guys list, I believe, billions expansion, and the people get nothing. We are going to be, I think, at the, at the exciting crosshairs of. So it's been a joy, a, a part of my life and journey just to have served you. So thank you all very much. Um, so with that, I do need to get back to the task at hand of the real business. Um, and all right, um, let's get your yes, report it, uh, to Director Bauman's comments of dealing with uh, the, the tactical, the here today, as well as positioning for the business for tomorrow. So what I'd like to do this morning is I want to restart off firstly, and I want to deal with just the immediate tactical, if I can, There's about four or five updates. One of them will be TOD at the end of my report to you, of my last report to you. Um, I really would like to take a few moments to talk about the the, the very challenging and uniquely challenging winter storm. You know, it, All right, let's hear this. in my working career, I don't think I've ever used certain words such as historic, unprecedented, once in a lifetime. It's become way too frequent uh, here in the last 12 months between COVID and riots and deep and, and deserved social unrest. Um, the winter storms, the forest fires that Director Way talked to reference earlier. Um, it's it's been quite something and a lot of this all happened at once what didn't hit hit us was just what we had just a few weekends ago um you know and even if we go back to january what this agency this uh, is going through like everybody else and the insurrection federally this is just a stress-filled time but out of it comes some out of our challenges comes some amazing amazing things um and uh, just recently, as we all we were hit with this other large storm, it was a frightening winter storm, which the reason hasn't seen in decades. And in fact, the CEO of PGE, a colleague of mine, Maria Pope, um, she said it's the worst um, impact uh, situation they've had in 40 years here. Uh, that's PGE. So um, uh, they're still recovering. We're stu we still have several bus routes that are still having to be altered because of trees and other disruption down the road. So we're still feeling the remnants of what one what, what, one might think is just a regular storm, uh, far from it. The amount of ice that came down uh, actually brought our system to a halt, probably the first time in our history. Um, and that includes both Max and bus. Um, it hit us from every direction, overhead wires that are, were arcing, trains lost power, windshields iced over literally in front of the operators while they were driving the trains. Uh, they couldn't, the wipers couldn't keep up and such. Um, heated switch froze. Uh, the switches to go back and forth on the train tracks. Um, a ruby, uh, a ruby yard became coated in one giant impassable sheet of ice. And in fact, I'm just going to ask if maybe Kimberly or Jeff, you could bring up the, the, the couple pictures I'm going to show you right now. And I think for the public at home, what was going on behind the scenes a little bit? And 
in just a couple photographs, I think, start to tell the picture, which Look amongst the wheel picture? didn't go anywhere. Look at the but bottom. It shows right you what screening. our team was having to deal with behind the scenes. Can you see that? And I normally don't do that, but if you take one picture, uh, in in Canada we call that a, a hockey rink. Um, <laughs> that is actually the top left picture. It's actually our ruby yard, our main rail yard, and you can barely see the tracks. And that's what employees were, there was no ability to actually execute service. And so the other one in the bottom right is also, you'd have to zoom in a bit, but you can start to see all the frozen ice over all the overhead catenary wires. <coughs> um, next pictures. Yeah, what a fail. So here's an example where literally the snow was up against the drifts, up against our, our services we provide, where you literally, they were frozen in time. We, uh, now we are, this is one of these types of events that you're darned if you do and you're darned if you don't. So we had some people actually, unfortunately, got stranded out there. Our operators got stranded out there. Um, and yes. they were out there for many, many hours. Yes, and we actually sent some buses out. So, uh, I think it was a few oh, cases we sent buses out to, to rescue people off trains. And they actually got stuck themselves. So this is such a unique uh, circumstance and so so significant that we literally became paralyzed even in our own recovery. From 711 to 211 to 411 to 911, no fire truck, uh, fire uh, police, or ambulance emergency responders were even responding to our calls. No. <laughs> so it, it was, um, we were truly paralyzed, if we will. Uh, thank you, if you can just take the, uh, actually, just move on to the next photograph to show a couple of trees down as well. There. So this is an example, the things that go, gee, why isn't the train coming? Well, these are the examples you're seeing here is maybe why not? Um, and so we're so dependent on all of our partners who did an amazing job. We had so many of our, um, uh, from PBOT, our partnership there, um, they had trouble getting their employees to work, as we did as well. But boy, did they sure do their darn and best. I'm going to give you one example of um, uh, that uh, from one of our employees that I thought was just, uh, I said this at my recent town hall, it was just a great example of some of the heroics that went on. For example, we had a, one of our a public safety manager, Justin Dillon. Um, he was assigned to our EOC, or we call Emergency Operations Center. And an example of going above and beyond as an unsung hero. You know, he, his day started at 3 o'clock in the morning, a little bit earlier than normal on the Saturday. He used his personal truck, truck to rescue three strand rail operators. He pulled three non-revenue or regular vehicles from the snow and ice bank. He recovered another yeah, 14 vehicle, yeah, private on. vehicles, back to private parking lots. Uh, all basically before he got to work. <laughs> and so um, it's just an, one example of many of what goes on with the show behind the scenes. And the they, show behind the scenes. This is just one example of many um, that our team put on. So I can't thank our employees enough um, for what they have endured, what they went through, and what they delivered and taking care of our customers. I also would like to thank and apologize to our customers. Some customers we could not take care of in the way we our heartbeats wanted us to, um, and so we didn't we didn't we didn't get it all right that those those few days for sure. And so I do want to apologize to each and every one of them um, because we gave our best, but it wasn't enough to get you where you needed to go. So um, we are in the customer service business. And uh, we, we are going to be doing lessons learned. We always do, because there's always things that we did really well and should be amazingly proud of, but there are things we did not get right. And, but that's what agencies knew is part to you know, rethink about how do you do it better next time? Because we live in this, this, this uh, uh, greenhouse, glass, uh, uh, greenhouse world now where it's going to happen again. And so we need to learn from that and, and learn quickly. So. Um, Anyhow, we are back in service. I think it is just one example where Mother Nature always gets to make the final say. And uh, um, they, uh, she sure did that day. And uh, uh, But we're back. We're back up. We're running, we're running well. So but the team worked tirelessly for this. So um, we um, I think that's probably all I want to say there on that one. The second item I'm just going to move to, if we can, is an update you all on uh, COVID. Um, we go from one, one challenge to another, um, but being the resiliency agency we do, um, on we go. 
the, there's some good news on COVID, and that's the, the portion of my report here is going to be about the vaccines today. I want to start on a positive note here, which has been so has been, has historically been quite challenging. Um, there's still lots we don't know, um, but the pair, our Lyft paratransit operators are now eligible to receive the vaccine, and they're, they are um, on their way getting that vaccine. So that's wonderful news, particularly for those who have health conditions and such. Um, so it's the start for us. Um, OHA, or the, the Oregon Health Authority, moved the operators into phase this phase one category. Understanding the work that they do provides assistance to those the sick and med medically uh, fragile. So um, they are, in fact, in some semblance, a sense an extension of some of the healthcare services that we all need to provide. Um, the operators are not required to take the vaccine, but those who choose so, um, that's that's a personal decision uh, for us. We are not requiring that at all. Uh, but we strongly want to encourage people to be informed about it. We would ask that to make the decisions right for them and their families when the time comes. Um, and the operators in this case are contractors and they work for first transit. Yeah, so, and that's uh, a thank fucking all. crime right Thanks here. For the shots. Um, we are still waiting for the governor's uh, Brown's order and the OHA when the, when the rest of our employees uh, will be eligible to re receive vaccines. We are in touch every day. Um, that's that. Um, uh, with the OHA, but we have not got um, uh, our signal yet or for the bell to ring for us to deploy our readiness plan. So, um, but when the time comes, we'll be ready. Um, also, a few weeks ago, we asked all employees to fill out a questionnaire to let us know, firstly, whether they're willing to take the vaccine, uh, whether they plan to get, uh, to get through it uh, through TriMet or by some other means. And if they have underlying health conditions, it would move them ahead in the line of eligibility. So, interestingly enough, we launched this just earlier last week, and we have had over a thousand of our employees in two and a half days fill out the form, which is terrific, showing the awareness and the importance of of this. So, that's very informative. We got to us one third. They have three thousand three hundred people working there, and they had one thousand response. Be us deploy limited window shot times what when they're available. We don't want to lose uh, an empty slot that we can actually help somebody else. In. So this is just an example of the many yeah. steps we're taking to ensure we're ready when the time comes. Um, the next item up, I just wanted to give you a quick uh, update on January's ridership. Uh, we have provided about 3 million rides in January. Despite uh, uh, the numbers of uh, uh, being down over a year, we were still provided uh, millions of really essential trips. Uh, looking at the numbers, we were down 61% from January 2020. The bus trips were down uh, just over 60%. Max saw a 62.5% uh, decline. Um, a nugget I always look at in the analysis in here, that the frequent service and off-peak service continue to perform a little bit better and operate in January at about 50% down uh, compared to this time last year. So this is a great example of we have to take care of the immediate things like the storm, like covid to the service of the day, but we also have to take care of what's our what are we ready for the ridership recovery when the time comes. Not going to happen. Let alone as, as the long term strategy the is happen. dealing with the short, medium, and long term parts of this business, and this is a great example of that. That when the recovery wow, time comes, the team is doing a significant amount of work, and we want to thank JC Nada and his team to look at things like the buy the dip strategy, uh, loyalty programs, so uh, etc. So when the time comes that we move back to, to herd or immunity or better, that people can come back out and start using the system, that we're ready with a rider recovery program. So just want to let the board know that work is uh, still going on um, extensively behind the scenes. The uh, next and last item I have for you as an update today is really in, around transit-oriented development. So as part of my commitment Bitcoin to you to be put down. together um, the, the, the long-term policy and strategy for transit-oriented development is to bring back quarterly updates to you. Um, and so this is a long-term strategy, as some of your kind board uh, words today uh, articulated. Um, but there's a lot of work going on. And now I want to just call on Bob Hastings, Lance Erz, and Guy Ben. And before I even introduce, let them speak, I want to also acknowledge Bob Hastings, who's going to be retiring in not too short a time for all his amazing work oh. for this agency. He is He's been there forever. Uh, just been an absolute great leader and contributor. And if you, if you ever need a storyteller around TriMet's history and this region's history, he is your man. So with that, I'm now going to turn it over to the three of those gentlemen to cover up the update on TOD. All right. All right. Okay. 
that's the end of the general manager's report, and I'm going to not watch anymore. I'm done with this for now. I'll go back later. Uh, I've had enough. I'll go back and listen to the rest of this some other time. I'm done with the board for today.